Good afternoon, everybody. Today, I'm going to do a culinary trip around Hollywood Studios. So this park is not known for its food. Do not say that it doesn't have good food, but it's not what it's known for. This park is known for its attractions, Star Wars Land, Hollywood Boulevard, a lot of different things, but just not necessarily the food. Today, I'm going to give you an entire trip around Hollywood Studios, show you every place that you can go to get food. And Rick's going to be joining me here in a few minutes. We're going to also try a bunch of snacks today. Not necessarily our favorite snacks, just maybe some stuff we haven't had and maybe some favorites. So come along with us as we take you through Hollywood Studios and a food tour. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the greatest show on the earth. So for right behind me is the uh, entrance gate. Immediately to the right as you're going in is the first place to get a bite to eat. This is the ice cold oak stand. So in this stand, they have Minute Maid Premium Lemonade or Wild Cherry Slushies, Mickey Premium Ice Cream Bars, Cookies, Chips, Water, and Soda. So we're gonna head straight down Hollywood Boulevard. The first thing we're gonna come to on our right-hand side is the Trolley Car Cafe. This is the Starbucks location in Hollywood Studios. You, from here, you can go three directions. You can go continue on down Hollywood Boulevard. You can take a right onto Sunset Boulevard, or you can take a left and you can go down by Echo Lake. So we're gonna go this direction first through Echo Lake. So the first one that you come to here in Echo Lake is the Hollywood and Vine. So Hollywood and Vine is two diff different experiences. It is the Disney Junior Play and Dine breakfast along with Minnie's Seasonal Dine. Right across the street from Hollywood and Vine. We're gonna turn this direction and we're gonna come across PV's Polar Pipeline. Now again, this is kind of just a drink stand. We're gonna count it because they have a couple of things that you can't normally get most places. All right, over here is Hollywood and Vine. And if we go up one more building, we're gonna come over to 50's Primetime Cafe. 50's Primetime is sort of a kitschy, themed after a 1950's kitchen, kitchenette. So you sit around a uh, table with a TV, black and white TV, showing 1950s commercials and shows, and you're waited on by either mom or your uncle or cousin. So if you don't eat your vegetables, they will make sure and let you know. Also, if you put your elbows on your table, mom might get on to you. So attached to 50s prime time is the tune-in lounge. Now the tune-in lounge is a little bit different post-COVID than it was pre-COVID. Currently, uh, they just serve alcohol. It's just a stand-up bar. But previously, you could get some food here. I don't believe that you currently can sit or get food. All right, continuing our tour around Echo Lake. Now we're over here at Gertie's. Gertie's is only an ice cream, but it is an iconic structure around Echo Lake. Uh, it's meant to be sort of reminiscent of like 1950s Hollywood. So continuing on through the loop of Echo Lake, we come to the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular. This is the stunt show here around Echo Lake. Right outside of that are two booths. One is the Epic Eats and one is the Oasis Canteen. So Epic Eats has funnel cakes, beverages, ice cream, yeah, standard soft drinks. And then Oasis Canteen, you can get beer and mixed drinks. From across Echo Lake, there's Gertie over there in the distance. We come across to this behemoth structure. And this is the Dockside Diner. So the Dockside Diner's menu has changed over the years. The most recent iteration, they're doing different kinds of hot dogs. Now, I haven't had one of these. I don't know, maybe this is gonna have to be snack number one because they've got a bacon, macaroni, and cheese hot dog. Sounds pretty interesting. All right, so the first snack of the day, this is the mac and cheese hot dog. It's got some mustard on it, mac and cheese, and bacon. It's on like a, a sort of a brioche hot dog bun with some chips. Oh, and Rick's here. Hey, everyone. It's about exactly what I expected it to be. Hot dogs taste similar to the Casey's hot dogs, so they're good. The mac and cheese is standard kids mac and cheese from Disney. And then, you know, a little bit of bacon, a little bit of mustard. So it's good, it's not great. A good, quick choice for lunch. So Rick had the second half of that hot dog. What'd you think? I thought it was pretty decent. I mean, nothing to, to write home about, but for a quick service hot dog, it, uh, it did what it had to do. It was good enough. 
So consensus of the hot dog here at Dockside Diner is, if you don't have a, a sit down reservation and the food booths over around sunset are too crowded, this is a good spot to get a hearty little meal I wanted to take a couple of minutes to talk about something that uh, Rick and I have been cooking up for a while now. He and I very much share a love for Central Florida and theme parks and Disney especially. So we've decided to take that a step further. We're opening up our own travel agency called Sunshine Tree Travel. And you can visit us at www.sunshinetreetravel.com. Uh, we'd be glad to help you book your Central Florida theme park vacation. We're also available to do cruises, and any other place that you want to do. Well, you can reach us at Facebook, Instagram, uh, Sunshine Tree Travel, and also uh, Rick at SunshineTreeTravel.com and Scott at SunshineTreeTravel.com. We hope that as you make your future Florida travel plans, that you reach out to us and let us assist. We're a no-fee agency. There's no cost to you. Disney pays us or the cruise lines pay us. So uh, all we're here to do is advocate on your behalf. I'll put it down in the notes of the video and then I'll put the, the link right here, sunshinetreetravel.com. So we came out of the Echo Lake Loop. Right over there is the Dockside Diner where we just were. And then as we pan across, we're gonna come over here to the Hollywood Brown Derby. This is gonna be our next spot. So the Hollywood Brown Derby serves a couple of different purposes here in Hollywood Studios. This is the signature restaurant here in the park. So you need to get a dining reservation to get in here. Generally, you're never gonna be able to get a walk up. Now, the, the exception to that is out here on the patio. This is the Brown Derby Lounge. And sometimes you can come over here and get a seat if you don't have a reservation. The third thing that occurs here at Hollywood Brown Derby is that this is where the Club 33 Lounge is here in Hollywood Studios. I've eaten in Brown Derby a couple of times in the past. Rick, have you ever eaten here? I've never been here before, now. Yeah, it's one of those places that it's a little expensive, especially in this park. This is one of those parks where, it, it, I mentioned this earlier, that is really about the rides and the attraction and the lands. This is really not where you come to have a culinary adventure. That's kind of why I wanted to cover it today because, you know, when you think about Hollywood Studios, there aren't many food thoughts that come to mind. So you sort of like, well, I'll just grab something when I'm there, or maybe you know 50's Prime Time, or maybe you know Sci-Fi. But uh, the really good restaurant, really solid, probably a better value for dinner than lunch. Okay, so we've kind of come full circle. Now, we're gonna come to Sunset Boulevard. Now, Sunset Boulevard is where you're gonna go if you're looking for Hollywood Tower of Terror and Rock and Roller Coaster. But there's also a few places to eat down here on the left. And I think there's another snack that we're gonna look at right over here. So the first thing you come to on your left is the Sunshine Day Bar. Now this one isn't of our snacks, but you can get beverages here. Right next to the Sunshine Day Bar is the Anaheim Produce. Now this is where you can buy uh, pretzels, churros, you can get beer here, your margaritas, and then your soft drinks and water. So the next thing we're gonna come to is the Sunset Ranch Market. So there's a couple of different things here at Sunset Ranch. First is Rosie's All-American Cafe. So here at Rosie's, you're gonna get chicken breast nuggets. They do have a uh, toasted plant-based lobster roll here. They also have a uh, burger, have dogs, and they have some kids meal choices. They also have the 50th celebration sandwich cookie and then your uh, beverages, standard beverages, and then they ha do have a little bit of alcohol. And then right next door is Catalina Eddie's. All right, so Catalina Eddie's has pizza and Caesar salads and breadsticks. If you're looking for good pizza, this is not the spot. But if you're just looking for a quick bite to fill you up, Catalina Eddie's will be just fine. Okay, so right on the back side of Catalina Eddie's, there are two uh, other booths sort of facing Sunset Boulevard. The first is Fairfax Fair. We're gonna get back to that in just a second because that's our next food stop. But then over here next to that is the Scoops Hollywood Ice Cream. Now this is uh, not your standard Disney ice cream. This is actually hand scooped ice cream. Really, really good. Also not very cheap. So this has bowls, buffalo chicken bowl, barbecue beef brisket bowl, a Korean barbecued pork belly bowl, and a soba noodle bowl. 
Rick and I are both gonna get one here and try them out for you. All right, so from Fairfax Fair, I got the Korean barbecue pork belly bowl. This is braised pork belly tossed in Korean barbecue sauce, topped with coleslaw and green onions, served on mashed potatoes in a waffle bowl. Looks amazing, smells so good too. Rick got the buffalo chicken bowl, which is chicken breast nuggets tossed in buffalo sauce, topped with coleslaw, served on mashed potatoes and a waffle bowl. The uh, waffle bowl is a little weird, but I'm willing to give it a shot. The, the pork belly is a little fatty, at least the first piece is a little fatty. It's, so it's, it's, it's tender. The barbecue sauce that's on it is good. Slaw is average. The buffalo is pretty good. It's pretty much what you would expect. Thinner buffalo chicken. It's not overly hot. The mashed potatoes are actually good. Yeah, the mashed potatoes are good. I'm a fan of that. That's pretty good. I think if the mashed potatoes weren't good, because that's sort of the base, if that sucked, I think the whole dish would fall apart. But I think since this is good and all the other indivi individual components are okay, I think it makes it a cohesive good dish. Yeah, I mean, I would say for a quick, for a quick meal, you couldn't go wrong with this. Yeah, definitely. I'm coming back for this one. So in this area of the park, you have Rock and Roller Coaster, and then you also have Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy. There's a Joffrey's Coffee booth right over here. But right over here, we have the Rock Station Eating to the Beat. Here you can get uh, nachos, well, tortilla chips and cheese, cookies, chips, frozen drinks, and uh, you can get your boozy frozen drinks as well. Also to note, um, at the exit of Tower of Terror, there's also a Joffrey's booth over there. Once you come out of the gift shop, which is the, also the exit of the ride, it's directly on your left-hand side. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna enter into commissary lane. There's a couple of different places here. We're gonna come up to the first one right here on our right. So we've made it over here to the ABC commissary. This is a quick service meal. They have uh, pork carnitas tacos. They have a Mediterranean salad. They have a burger. And then they have one of my favorite sandwiches here in the park, buffalo grilled chicken grilled cheese. That's a lot of words. Up next is the Sci-Fi Dine-In Theater. So Jennifer and I did a video here, uh, I wanna say probably about four or five months ago. And this is a highly themed, very popular restaurant, really tough to get in. Rarely will you ever get a walk up. You're gonna have to make a advanced dining reservation in order to get in. But once you do get in, it's themed after sort of a 1950s drive-in theater. Most of the seats are in these cars, burgers, fries, milkshakes. Pretty good meal. I think Rick said that this was one of your favorites here in the park. Yeah, definitely. We've been here many times. So I like watching all the B, the, the old like beef rated movies that they play. And it's it's really, really, really dark in there. And it's very cool. So it's a great place to cool off. And right next door to that is one of Jennifer and I's new favorite places. This is Baseline Tap House. Now this is mainly a bar. They have um, different kinds of craft beer, cider, and they do have some cocktails and non-alcoholic drinks. But they do have a couple of food items here, one of which is the uh, charcuterie board, which is very, very good. So sort of at the convergence of two different paths, if I go back over here to the left, this is where we were earlier. Indiana Jones is over there in the uh, wooded section. And then to my right is Star Tours, and uh, Baseline Tap House is right over there to my right. We're gonna continue on, we're gonna hit Pizza Rizzo and Muppets. But right here, situated in between all that, is Backlot Express. So here at Backlot Express, it's again, it's kind of standard food. Burgers, fries, sandwiches, hot dogs, and then uh, a couple of dessert options. They, they do have a pretty big indoor section, but then they have this gigantic outdoor section. This is not fine dining cuisine, but it's food that'll fill your belly on a long day here at the park. So if you watched my video two videos ago, you'll recognize this tunnel coming up. We just did a video all about Galaxy's Edge, but what we didn't cover was what was to the left of that tunnel. So this is the Grand Park section, and here we have the uh, Muppet Vision 3D, we have Pizza Rizzo, we have Mama Mel Roses, and then we have the Muppet store, which, you know, the last time I was down here, the Muppet store was still not open. I don't know if it's open, so we're gonna take a walk around and see if that's open while we talk about all the other restaurants and places to get a snack. Welcome to Pizza Rizzo. So Pizza Rizzo is a quick service pizza place here in this section of the park. Tons of tons and tons of seating. 
inside, outside, upstairs. Here's the thing. I am not personally a fan of Pizza Rizzo. It's the kind of pizza that you would expect from any kind of kiddie place here at Disney. It's, it's bread, it's pizza sauce, it's cheese, and maybe a couple of slices of pepperoni. It's not real great pizza. Rick, however, loves it. I don't love it, but it's not bad. He doesn't love it, <laughs> but he, he doesn't mind it. Yeah, it's all right. This is one of the last places you will catch me coming to eat. This is a, a huge cavernous lobby. You walk in, you can mobile order or go up and order your food directly. So I guess the upstairs section is currently closed, but you can sort of see plenty of indoor seating over here, along with all the outdoor seating that we saw earlier. Just past Pizza Rizzo, we're gonna come to Mama Melrose's here in just a second. So Mama Melrose is a sit down restaurant. Again, you're gonna have to make dining reservations. Now, of all the restaurants here in Hollywood Studios, if you want a sit down reservation and you need to get a walk up because you didn't make it in advance, Mama Melrose is probably the place to get it. All right, so we are back over here, going back into Galaxy's Edge. Now we're not gonna rehash all of this because I'm gonna put a link to the video I did just two weeks ago and uh, for Galaxy's Edge where I went over every item uh, available in here. All right, next up on our list over here in Toy Story Land is Woody's Lunchbox. This is a another quick service meal where you can mobile order or go up to the counter and order. This basically has um, sandwiches, some ice cream and um, kids meals. I believe they have tachos too here. But what uh, we're gonna stop for today is they have some um, desserts that are like uh, their version of a Pop-Tart. And I think we're gonna each grab one of those maybe and we're gonna sit down and have that. Okay, so we have the what? raspberry lunchbox part. It's raspberry marmalade stuffed pastry coated in a strawberry fondant with crispy pearl. Basically, it is a raspberry pop tart. All right, so Rick got the hot cocoa lunchbox tart, which is chocolate fudge filling, hot cocoa marshmallow fondant, and mini marshmallows. What'd you get to drink? Uh, that's the Mystic Portal Punch. Powerade Mountain Berry Blast with flavors of lemon lime and tangerine. Mmm, that's pretty good. The raspberry's good. Um, it's a little bit like a shortbread. A little bit. And then the fondant is kind of just standard. But the raspberry jam is really good. How's yours? Good. Uh, similar to a Pop-Tart. So this is Toy Story Rodeo Roundup Barbecue. This has been being built for, oh look, there's Buzz. Hey Buzz. Uh, this has been being built for, since prior to the pandemic, they started this. I wanna say this was started in 2018. This used to be the uh, entrance to the Toy Story Mania. And then when Toy Story Land opened, they flipped it and, and now it, uh, you enter on the other, other side. But what I wanted to mention over here is there's two little food booths one is a Joffrey's coffee booth. It just, just has coffee and pastries and donuts. And then over here, they have a little food market. So they have Tech Jack's Num Num Cookie. They have nacho chips with cheese. You can get a banana over here. You can also get beer, margarita, pina colada, and a pineapple coconut slushie. Well, that sounds pretty good. Well, that's our tour around Hollywood Studios. Went around the entire park, looked at all of the quick service, all of the table service, and most of the carts. We got a foot, couple of snacks and We've already discussed it. We were like, do we want to stay and ride anything or do anything else? And both of us are pretty full. So I don't, I think the answer to that is no. You know, again, this is not the park you think of when you think about food and culinary experiences. But I think we've shown today that, that there's plenty of places to find decent food and some places to find really good food here at Hollywood Studios. But, uh, don't let this park go to waste when it comes to your dining dollars. Last word, favorite place to eat here. So far, I mean, out of what we had today, the, those little waffle bowls were the best thing I had here today. Yeah, those were a find, man. I think probably my favorite place to eat here, 50s prime time, just because I'm a fan of the fried chicken. I think you said you like um, sci-fi. Sci yeah, I like it for the atmosphere. I mean, food wise, I probably would have to go with prime time also. Yeah, and then again, Hollywood Derby's good, but that's a pricey one. It's not one that I'm gonna go to every time. But I think we found that there's plenty of really good quick service in this park. You just gotta find it, be choosy in what you select, just like we did at Fairfax Fair. Sometimes you're gonna find a diamond in the rough. 
So guys, thank you for coming along with us today. If never lost, then never found. So go get lost. Go get lost. <laughs>